Thank you for attending our third in a series of Inventor for Woodworkers. My name is Steve Whittem of Whittem Associates. Uh, today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about eye features and how they can be used in the wood trades. What we're looking at is a standard Baldwin lock that has to be mortised into the side vertical rail of a door. And it might have different back sets, width, lengths, and thickness. And I'd like to do it one time and be able to use this eye feature over and over again. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to start creating um, a piece of scrap material that I'll build my um, mortise into. And this could be almost any size, but uh, I'm picking six inches by inch and three quarter by about two feet. And I will sketch on the edge of the piece of wood and create that rectangular mortise based on the spec I pulled directly down from Baldwin's own website. And it's six and a half inches by inch and three quarters, and I'm going to center it within that piece of scrap material. I'll also place a center point, and that center point is going to be used downstream to locate it exactly accurately in the vertical rail of the door itself. Um, I'll extrude and cut down an eighth of an inch for that top piece on the actual um, lock set itself. Um, colorize it, make it look a little bit different so that I can visualize it. Um, I'll come over to the edge and we'll create a slot mortise. Slot mortises are used mostly by our CNC uh, users because uh, the machinery that's going to cut it will have a radius um, end rather than a square traditional mortise. And of course we'll size it, we will um, locate it, um, center it, and then we'll extrude and cut it uh, the full depth of the mortise which happens to be four inches in this particular case and this is going to be static but again we can make it variable if we wanted to so we not only could have it six inches and four inches whatever value we want we'll also create some pilot holes um, that are normally used in the wood trades just so that when we screw into the wood it doesn't split it and we'll set it so it's three eighths inches three eighths of an inch off of each side Using the hole tool inside of Inventor, pretty straightforward. We can drill a hole of any diameter and any size, make it very, very simple. And again, because it's CNC, these will, of course, be drilled for us. At this time, I'm going to move to the face of the piece of wood. And in the face, I have to build the cylinder hole, turn knob and thumb piece, and spindle knobs. Um, so I turn off the full shading so I can see the edge detail of the mortise itself. So you can see and locate it. I'll set these up vertical to each other so that they all track similarly. Um, we'll also draw a center line so because the dimensions that Baldwin gives us is off the center of the pocket. Uh, once we do that, we then can start actually dimensioning the holes themselves. Uh, to whatever value they have to be. Again, static or variable, up to us. Once we've done that, I'm going to now create a back set, and I'm going to create a dimension. I, instead of giving it a static dimension, I'm going to say BS equals 2.75, and then I'm going to drill the two holes through the piece of wood, share the sketch, and then drill the third hole, which is the cylinder hole, only through one thickness by using the two next feature. Again, pretty straightforward, easy to do. As Soon as that's done, I can now create the eye feature inside of Inventor. And the eye feature is a wonderful tool because we just have to pick it. We have to pick the features we want to be part of the eye feature. And you could see that the back set is one of our variable options that we're going to use. Okay, and then we're going to save it into a catalog and call it mortise lock with variable back set so that we'll be able to, of course, change that back set downstream. So that's now done. I'll bring in a door, an assembly that I've already put together, and I'm going to sketch on the edge of the piece of wood and create a center point. That center point is going to match directly up to the center point on the eye feature. So I'm going to tell it it's 36 inches from the bottom of the piece of wood, and then I'm going to center that Ex that point exactly in the center of the door frame. Once I do that, I can create the eye feature, bring it in, position it approximately where I want, and then once I've done that, I can line up the two points 
that I have done previously uh, using the coincident constraint and they'll line up perfectly and pretty much done. If I want to, I have the ability to change the back set. Now, for extreme, I'm saying it's a one inch back set that's next to impossible, but you could see it's absolutely variable and can be used over and over again for many different types of doors. We also have the ability to change the location of the mortise by quickly just changing the point and it follows with us. Again, quick, easy, efficient, over and over again, always works. Again, appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Thank you once again. My name is Steve Whittem.